Welcome to the first video on this channel. In the next 12 minutes, we'll take this landing page for a new translating text editor and turn it into this redesigned experience. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. My name's Edon, I'm a product designer, and I'm here with the first of what I'm hoping will be a long and prosperous series of videos about improving the user experience and user interface of different web pages. Today, we'll be redesigning the Fluently landing page. Fluently, as it states here, is an online text editor with built-in translating functionality. I discovered Fluently while browsing Product Hunt, and after viewing this landing page, thought it would be a great page to do my first video on. I do want to call out that I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and I actually haven't tried out the beta for myself. So I've just hopped into Figma, where I've recreated the landing page pixel for pixel. Before making any modifications, I'm going to break down exactly what I'm seeing. The first thing that jumps out at me are the colors. The purple, blue, and orange, I think, go really well together. The banner in particular feels really nice. It looks kind of like a, a soothing sunrise with the way the colors transition from this light purple to bright orange. The layout jumps out to me as being very vertical so far, almost like I'm browsing on my iPhone. On a computer, we have more room to work with, so in this case, I don't think a one column layout is the best use of space. The work to information ratio is quite high. What I mean by that is there isn't that much information that's being communicated here to necessitate that much vertical space. This is something I'll look to tighten up through the entirety of the page. Going down a bit further, I feel really bombarded by the density of information. There's a less than ideal combination of lots of text and lots of excessively large images. My eyes don't know exactly where to focus. But with that said, I do think there's a really strong foundation here. And with some design cleanup and restructuring, this landing page can easily be taken to the next level. The first thing I'm going to modify is this banner here at the top. It is pretty common for landing pages to have a banner containing a call to action that's above the header. However, it's not very typical for that CTA to be a primary action, like logging in or trying a beta. It's usually something more subtle like updates or new events, where the consequences aren't nearly as bad if it happens to be ignored. Like I mentioned earlier, I do really like the sunrise aesthetic, so I'm not going to completely remove the banner. Rather, I'm going to shrink it down to about 8 pixels, which will let us keep this visual as a nice accent bar for the entire page. Next, I'm going to remove the social media icons. I need to find a new place to put the CTAs that I removed from the banner, and the right of the header is the industry standard, where users can consistently expect to find a button or link to click. Fluently's header is sticky, and it's more important to have the login and try beta links always accessible than it is to have the social media icons. In terms of layout, the logo and CTA elements in the header are too spread out for my liking. Here's where it's helpful to work on a grid. My go-to is Bootstrap's 12 column grid, which I'll use to align the header. Like I said earlier, one of my big issues with the page is its long one column layout. To make better use of the space, I'll align the text to the left of the page and pull up the image and align it to the right. This not only improves the readability of the text, but also gives us room to pull up the main try our beta CTA up above the fold so users won't have to scroll down to view it. It's easy to see now that this content is a little wordy, so I'm going to liberally delete the last two paragraphs. Now I want to be clear here, freely deleting stuff is rarely this simple in real life. For the rest of this video, I reorganize and move content around with no knowledge to the actual product or to the true effectiveness or repercussions of my proposed changes. I'm mainly just aiming to trim the fat and cut down on the redundant content as best I can. So treat what I do in this video in the context of a design exercise rather than real world effectiveness. The current font is Beatrice, which I think works fine as heading text. However, when used as body text, it's very wide and hard to make out. I'm going to change the body font to Noto Sans, 
and bump up the font size so it's easier to read. My rule of thumb for line heights is 125% for title text and 150% for body text. The image we have right now has a lot of information packed into it and is too overwhelming to have in the hero section. Fortunately for us, we have the perfect illustration further down the page, so I'm going to swap them. One last adjustment I'll make in this section is to change the body text to a shade of gray so there's greater contrast with the heading. Moving down, I'm going to set aside this paragraph for now. I do like the intention to communicate the background behind the founding of the product and the motivation for doing so, but I don't think this is the right place for it yet. It's more important to use the space right below the hero section to sell the user to why Fluently is a great product. I'm also going to delete this text about Fluently being in beta. Our main CTA has already communicated that, and I don't think this adds too much. These four badges communicate that Fluently has been absolutely killing it on Product Hunt, a site where users can curate the best new tech products. This provides really great social proof that Fluently is the real deal. So I'm going to create a small section to emphasize this. Now into the meat of this page, where there's a lot more fat to trim. This would be the time where I'd want to have conversations with my team members to understand what information or features would be most important to our target users. There's an identical newsletter section at the bottom, so I'm going to delete it from here. My goal is to make this information clearer and more concise. So to help me eliminate redundant content, I'm going to group the information down into related themes. These four paragraphs here all talk about the backend technology, which is a bit much. I think having a separate page to go into detail about this for those who are interested would be a better option. So I'm going to remove it from this page. Earning your customer's trust is a strong value proposition. I think it makes a lot of sense to create a visually tiered off section just for it. I'm going to create a dark blue background with a slight gradient to make it stand out visually. I also think an image would complement this message very well and be more impactful than communicating solely in text. Obviously, I don't have a perfect picture lying around, so I'll use the Unsplash Figma plugin to easily add an image from Unsplash's library. I'll wrap this section up by adding some decoration to the background. Going back to these themed groupings, these all highlight Fluently's different features. Rather than keeping them in this paragraph form, I'm going to separate them into three feature modules, adding some iconography and colors to help make them visually distinct and easily scannable. Figma has a great plugin to add icons called Iconify that makes it easy to search for icons across different icon sets. For convenience, I'm going to use this plugin to choose three icons that I think fit decently well with the three features. The remaining product information, I think, is a tier less important than the features that we've already highlighted. Rather than showing images of the app, it could make more sense to give a guided tour through the actual product. So I'm going to add a product tour link below the heading text. I won't fully design this, but I'd imagine this new page to be some type of guided tooltip laden flow through the actual text editor. Here's that image we set aside from earlier. I think this section we're currently in is actually the perfect place for it. The picture gives a preview of what the app looks like right after we highlight its awesome features. It's really convenient how perfectly that picture swap ended up working out. Let's not forget this paragraph that we set aside earlier. Now that we've covered Fluently's core features, it's a great time to introduce the people behind the product and their motivation for building Fluently. Compared to the more technical aspects above, this content does seem like it's trying to appeal more to the emotional side of the brain. In addition to laying the content out to be more readable, I'm going to add an image, which I think will help form an emotional connection. Once again, I'll use the Unsplash plugin to easily find a picture. Reading over this content, I think it makes a lot of sense to move the community link up from the footer to this section. We haven't done anything too crazy visually yet, so I'm going to have a little bit of fun and add a pattern background. Luckily for me, there's also a Figma plugin for this, 
It's called Hero Patterns, and it lets me choose from a wide list of patterns to overlay, in whichever color I choose. When it comes to this section containing this video, I don't have any issue with the content that's here. I'm just going to shift things around a bit to mirror the multi-column layout that we have in the above panel. We haven't used Fluently's pink color yet, so I'll use it for the background color. I'll add some decorative elements as well, so it's not just a bland pink rectangle. Yeah, I know my solution to that is just adding more rectangles. It is super simple, but it does make a difference. Lastly, we have the footer section. I don't have any big issues with the content that's here either. In terms of styling, I'm going to restyle the email field so that there's greater contrast with the background, and it's more visible. I'll also shorten the button text since it's currently repeating the copy above. The what's new link in the bottom left is floating all by itself, so I'll move it down so it has some friends at the bottom. Lastly, I'll push the social media icons down to align them with the rest of the links. And that wraps up my redesign of the Fluently landing page. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll throw up a side-by-side -side comparison of the changes and yeah, let me know what you think. My ears are always open and would love to hear any feedback. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>